So uh, apologies, this will be a first for us. We are going to do a presentation without slides. The, the projector doesn't seem to like neither our Linux or our Windows laptop. Uh, so uh, first, uh, let me tell you that uh, we are re releasing uh, a paper with this presentation. So uh, obviously, we are going to uh, to miss the detail without the slide. Uh, we have already lost some time, so we won't also miss more details. So uh, go read the paper. <laughs> There's a lot of information there. So uh, basically, what was this talk about? Um, basically, we are releasing a tool. A tool to audit the CAN devices, and uh, we were presenting. We were about to present why we need this such tool, and um, what we, you could do with this tool. Okay. Okay. Um, the very idea of, uh, of this tool is uh, to um, to come up with uh, the, the one particular fact. When you want to edit a, a protocol, uh, you have two options. Uh, either you reverse the whole protocol from scratch, you have to understand everything, or you let, for example, a legitimate client do most of the, the communications, but because you are able to set uh, a man in the middle configuration, you listen to these legitimate clients doing the communication, and at the right moment, you start um, um, blocking packets, modifying packets, replaying packets. Uh, the very idea of this approach, the man-in-the-middle approach, is really to let uh, legitimate clients do the heavy work. Uh, the, this way, do, you don't have the need to reverse everything, and you start uh, playing with data, trying to find, trying to exploit vulnerabilities at the right moment. The very problem with the CAN network is that it is a serial bus network, meaning that uh, you cannot do this. Uh, for example, if you do this for web application, you simply set up Burp Suite or um, Zap Proxy, that kind of tool, and you are, you are in fact intercepting uh, every information. You can modify them also. With a CAN serial bus, you cannot unless you physically cut the bus and insert yourself in between, or you plug out one particular device, the one device who wants to, to audit, and you, again, you build a, 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 a CAN bus just for this device, and you put yourself in the middle of these, of these two bus, and you start uh, re, uh, forwarding from the uh, packets from these two buses, and when you're ready, when you think you it's the right moment, you start uh, modifying or replaying packets. Okay. So, what was the objective of our tools? So, there was already other tools to work with CAN. They were mostly based on UART over, uh, sorry, over USB. It's quite slow. It can't handle the full speed of CAN, which is one megabyte. And Nevertheless, two can interface, so we cannot just use two two US serial over USB tools connected to a computer and in the computer to do the man in the middle. We had to build uh, new tools, which is CanSpy. Um, so about CanSpy, what we need? We need two can interface to do the man in the middle, either also to sniff and inject. We can also do that. We need to be able to forward frame from CAN1 to CAN2 and from CAN2 to CAN1. And we want to also to be able to filter, to trigger uh, a frame and change the value uh, because we want to paint test. And what we want to is Ethernet because we want to use standard tools such as SCAPI or Wireshark and Ethernet is quite convenient. And also it has the required speed for two or even more CAN interface. So our tools is based on Ethernet. You, we also have a serial port. You can still get the frame from on a serial port, but this is more for debug purposes. We can also store the settings of the tools in an SD card to, in order to be autonomous, to put the tools in the car without connecting a computer and logging the packet, for example. Uh, about CanSpy hardware, we, we, would we want to avoid any complex soldering for people in order that everyone can use these tools 
So the main board is um, a demo shield, a demo, uh, a demo board you can find on the internet. So uh, it's on the slide, so you will need the paper to find the reference. And we use uh, a shield that provides uh, Ethernet connector, SD card, serial. You can also find it on internet, on Mouser, DGK. And both are less uh, uh, at 60 bucks, I think. And but you will still need to solder a small shield because we did not find any shield with CAN interface, so we have to make it. But it's really simple. Uh, it's mostly jumper to set up several settings, either if you are working on the real car or you're working on a bench. So you have to set up uh, resistors, power supply, etc. And everyone can solder it, and it's also cheap, less than 30 bucks. So the complete tools is less than 100 bucks. Depend on where you read everything. Okay. Actually, if you don't want to solder uh, the, 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 the can shield, we have some spare shield for some for people who want to, to try it yeah. uh, more quickly. So yeah, Co come at the end of the presentation, and, and uh, you can see actually the, the tool. We have two tools running there. Yeah. Uh, we're going to, to talk about them. But for example, we have one that is emulating a car, and the other one that is doing the man in the setup, man in the middle setup. Uh, that is basically w what you need to do the can device. Uh, Without, uh, without auditing the whole car. You need uh, either the capability to emulate the whole car to make the, the device think it's at home, and you or you need to have a, a tool doing the man in the middle attack so you can uh, modify the packet on the fly. So uh, we have here a bench with uh, one can spy doing the emulation, doing, um, emulating the car, and one doing the man in the middle attack. Uh, for example, I have my phone here with um, uh, diagnostic, uh, diagnostic tool, uh, thinking it's we are currently uh, driving at uh, 15 kilometers per hour. <laughs> and uh, that is the, the first can spy doing the emulation. And uh, at any moment, at the end, we are going to set up the man in the middle and to activate the, the, the internal filtering engine to ask him to modify the, the speed so that uh, the, the tool thinks we are driving at two, 200 and. Uh, 55 kilometers, which is the, the maximum uh, according to the, the on one byte, one byte pack. It's a cheap, uh, cheap OBD2 uh, dongle connected to Bluetooth. Then a free application you can find on the store. Okay. Uh, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, the idea is for well, yeah, you, I, I guess we missed a bit of uh, of introduction. Uh, actually, we, we are working with car manufacturer to to help them uh, find vulnerabilities. Uh, before they, they are embedded computers that they want to, to put in car uh, are put in the market. Uh, that's why we, we built this tool. Uh, like I said, uh, doing a man in the middle, you need to physically cut the bus or extract the device. If, you would if you're doing this at home, that means you have to take apart your car. But we are helping car manufacturers, so they gave us access to integration bench where, where it's easy to plug in or plug out the can devices. Uh, they can give us specifications so we can build the, the car emulation software uh, quite easily. But the reason we, we choose uh, to, for today to, to use the, 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 the UBD2 case is that it's easy for everyone to do the same as, as we do, but uh, at home. You don't need to cut anything or to unplug anything with the, the OBD2 case. You just need your car, uh, an OBD2 device, chi a cheap uh, diagnostic tool, for example. You can set up the can spy tool in between the, your car and the, the diagnostic tool, and then you can start uh, playing with the, the, the device. A little tip, if you want to, to turn around uh, a security uh, issue that, uh, that is usually considered, uh, people try to attack car, uh, why not attack tools that, that are connecting to the car? This tool can be sensi pretty sensitive. For example, if you manage to, to compromise a diagnostic tool, the other car that will be connected to this diagnostic, diagnostic tool will be at risk also. Uh, one easy way to do this is to play with uh, diagnostic requests, which answers are fragmented over multiple uh, CAN frames. Uh, because the, the diagnostic tool usually uh, Defragment those frames to re, to, um, to extract the, 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 the payload that was initially sent by the, the, the car, and if it's quite it's easy to uh, to induce buffer overflows at the, at this point, uh, 
tools always uh, expect the car to be compliant with the norm, which is true. I have never found a car that was not compliant with the norm. But if you put uh, your, a man in the middle device at this point and force, for example, the vehicle identification number, which is uh, 17 ASCII characters long, to be uh, up to 40,000 characters, you will induce a buffer overflow that can be exploited uh, pretty much like any buffer overflow. Yeah, just uh, an obvious information, but everything is open source and open hardware. You can find it on our Bitbucket. You will uh, have to search on <laughs> Google. Um, the firmware has been designed in order to simplify uh, adding new function, new functionality, because uh, maybe you want to add new function on the shell, for example. We have a, sh a serial shell with it's used to change and manage settings, but you can want to add a new functionality. So when designing the firmware, we really think uh, how we can add new function. A little, a little word about the, the, this firmware. Uh, as you sh may have understand without the slides, we have two kind of devices. Uh, did we talk about the internet? <laughs> okay. We have two kind of devices, one internet device, one U UART device, one SD card driver. Um, in order to never miss a frame, that, that's really the, the, our goal. Uh, we want to forward uh, the full data rate, of, uh, that means up to one megabit per second from two canvases. We want to forward frames between the two without dropping a frame. So we had to design the firmware using real-time techniques to, to achieve this goal. Uh, if you uh, add new uh, functionalities to the, to the tool while complying with our ab abstraction layer, you can add functionalities and be sure that you will not impair the real-time properties of, uh, of our tool. So we, we skip a large part of the talk where we were talking about CAN architecture, but with that slide, it will not be uh, possible to explain, I think. So we can try. <laughs> yeah, so let's try. Yeah, let's try. So a few words about CAN architecture. So what you can find in a car. So the most basic one is one single bus with every EQ. So EQ is a, um, an electronic control unit. So in your car, you have up to 70 uh, control units for controlling the dashboard, the brakes, the engine, etc. They are all connected. And if we think of the most basic architecture, this is just one bus and everything connected. So as you can imagine, we will have congestion issue because if everyone is talking at the same time, no one, someone cannot talk. So the mechanism is based on ID priority to select which form will be sent if two AQ are talking in the same time. The lowest uh, ID is the most priority, it's the highest priority, sorry. Um, but as you can imagine, uh, an EQ that have a really low priority will never talk. So it's in the most advanced architecture and recent car, you have several bus. So uh, another point of having separate bus buses is to try to segment, for example, with one bus for the entertainment, the navigation, and one bus for the engine and the brake. So this was more thinking for safety than for security, but it's still good for security. You can have, again, two possibilities. There are two bus with AQ on each bus, and AQs that are connected to two buses. For example, for the navigation system, it is related to the entertainment, but it also needs the speed and information from the car. And what we can think as a state-of-the-art architecture on modern car is with several buses and gateway between these buses, so like a uh, Ethernet network. And this gateway will filter the message based on their ID, but they can be a little bit smarter and use the state of the vehicle. If the vehicle is stopped, if it's running, if which speed it is running, if the engine is off, etc., and they will allow different ID in function of the state of the car. So we can see that this is something with we can play. The, the, very, the, the idea the, is that um, for an attacker, you have first the exposed ECU, for example, navigation system or um, uh, telematic functionalities, you know, using broadband, uh, mobile broadband communications. And once you compromised uh, either of these two type of ECUs, in order to really impact safety, you have to compromise more ECUs. 
but usually these ECUs will not be on the same bus as the ECU you just compromised. Uh, so you need to move from one bus to one uh, to another, and the idea is to compromise uh, an ECU that is either on multiple buses, like the, the first case uh, Arnaud presented, or if you are in a situation where you, you have a central gateway, to compromise this gateway. And that is essentially the, um, the, the goal be one, be behind our tool. Uh, it's not about auditing a navigation system, you know, compromising Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, USB, uh, mobile broadband. It's, uh, it's really for the second line of defense, uh, to audit uh, ECU from the CAN bus. The idea is to craft attack from the CAN bus, not compromise an ECU from Bluetooth, for example, and reach the CAN bus. That is the first step. Uh, it's an important step. We, we do that step two when we audit uh, ECUs. But really, there's nothing to add here. Uh, I mean, uh, bl if you want information about Bluetooth penetration testing or Wi-Fi penetration testing, there's already plenty of tools, plenty of uh, literature uh, to, to, exp to, to explain everything. On the broadband too, you can find a lot of data about broadband pen testing. It's not specific to automotive. Usually, you, know, you just end up uh, building an IMSI catcher uh, to force uh, the ECU to, uh, to use your own mobile broadband. And again, you, are, you set up a man in the middle attack so you can try to, uh, to modify the information coming from the car manufacturer infrastructure and see what happened uh, on the car. Man in the middle is really the, the way when you want to, to find and exploit vulnerabilities very quickly uh, without, uh, without the need to really understand all, everything. Uh, this is something that was lacking uh, to us uh, from the CAN perspective, doing CAN attacks from the CAN bus, and that's why we ended up uh, building this tool. I'm just working at the time. Okay. Um, um, do you guys, is there anyone that has questions? Yeah, we, we have the demonstration yeah. running here. So since we have time, I guess we have. Yeah. Uh, you can come and see uh, the demonstration running. We have no camera to show this and the screen of the phone is not loud <laughs> enough for the everyone. So. <laughs> uh, and if you have questions, of course, you can answer. And again, we apologize for this issue. We try on two computers, Linux, a window, and it was working on the speaker room, so. That's happened.